Welcome back to the Sports Not interview. Today, we're talking Shohei Otani, the growing scandal around the Los Angeles Dodgers key piece there. And of course, uh, the best player in baseball in my mind. And on Monday, he had a quote unquote press conference, really wasn't a press conference. He made a statement with a new interpreter. And to talk about that with us is Dan Epstein. He's a contributor over at Forbes, writes about baseball all over the place, actually. So Dan, thanks for being with us on this one. Uh, I was particularly drawn to a piece you wrote uh, on Forbes about why it might be difficult for Otani to stay clean in this thing. And it got weirder today, right? So he comes out sticking now to the second story, which is uh, that his interpreter really robbed him and stole this money from him. And it's hard because we're still trying to piece this all together as it unfolds. But tell me your initial thoughts after hearing what Shohei Otani had to say in Los Angeles on Monday. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm really happy to be here to be talking about this. Uh, it seems like it's all that the sports world is talking about right now because this is incredible when you just take a step back from it for a minute to think that this kind of, of massive scandal could happen to anyone. And it just so happens to be the greatest player in the sport uh, who is doing things on the field that are unprecedented. And now he's he's wrapped up in something that we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg with it. So today's press conference, which, as you pointed out, really isn't a press conference. He gave he read a statement. Um for me, it leaves more questions unanswered than it does uh, provide answers. He didn't answer a lot of the key questions. He didn't answer how did Ipe Mizuhara get access to his account in the first place and all of the, the copious documentation that he would need in order to be able to send account uh, of transfers in $500,000 increments. Um, didn't answer how come he didn't notice four and a half million dollars missing from his accounts sooner than I think he said Tuesday is when he found out. Um, it didn't answer why his story that he read today was different than the ESPN report that uh, that dropped earlier that claimed he, uh, I, I, in fact, I'll read it, you know, from ESPN, mm -hmm. it says 9.05 Eastern time Tuesday, the Otani spokesman that's the, the spokesman that Otani hired for crisis <laughs> management, confirms to ESPN that the gambling debt amount to at least four and a half million. And at 1030, uh, you know, it, he spoke with him via phone. It said in there that Otani, pay, Otani told his agent, Nezbolello, that he covered Mizuhara's debts in $500,000 increments. That's information that came from his spokesman to ESPN. Now, they've obviously since walked that back and said that Otani didn't know about it. But the original report before they they did that was that Otani told his agent that he covered Mizuhara's <laughs> debts in $500,000 increments. So that question is the big question. Did he or did he not? And if so, then what he said today was a fabrication. Um, I, I, I don't know what is the truth, but... Right. I don't think we got it today, or at least not all of it. That's for sure. Yeah, and it's it's very it's very interesting because I know I, I've seen people discussing. And first of all, that's why I thought your article was so great because you went through the process. Because I think for most baseball fans, even to understand how how the federal monetary uh, reporting works when you have when you transfer wire transfer that kind of money because not all of us are doing that all the time, right? <laughs> so you're talking about that, and to explain the paperwork, so. For the story to be true as it was said in the second form, i.e., Ipe robbed me, in essence, he stole from me, uh, he would have had to forge several documents over and over again to do that, including having his driver's license. Now, could he have access to that? To your point, we won't know the truth of this. But what's what struck me is if I start to look at the the levels, because a lot of people say, well, there's a lot of professional athletes whose who's, who's staffs uh, uh, rip them off and all this kind of stuff. And that is true to a certain degree. But in this case, and, and tell me what you think about this, Dan. In this case, it's like, wait, so so your agent, your accountant, um, your tax person, your your interpreter all had to have missed, the, or not, not the interpreter, but all those people, all those levels of folks that run a business that's as big as Shohei Otani, because that's what he is, would have to have missed that. That's really hard. Like you said, it, you're guilty, or excuse me, innocent until proven guilty. But 
it makes it real hard to understand how any of that could be true to say that he didn't know what was going on. Absolutely. I mean, this is Shohei Otani. There is more than now. I understand that Ipe Mizuhara and Otani were like brothers. They were right. inseparable. They they ate every meal together. I get that. Um, but he was not the only person in Otani's universe. He has representation. He's got an agent. He's got people working for him. He's got all kinds of people that we don't even know about that are connected to him. And you would hope he's got financial advisors and all sorts of things. Um, and no one red flagged this to him. I mean, not even himself. Like you would think he would have looked at a bank statement sometime between September <laughs> and now. I mean, I get not everyone does that, but not everybody has Shohei Otani's money either. <laughs> so, you know, it's plausible, but it sure isn't likely. And if that's true, if it's true that you really had nothing to do with any of this, why not take questions? Yes. Why not accept questions from the media uh, who are going to ask all the things that I just did? How come you didn't know about this? Um, how come you just found out about it now? How did he get access to everything? Why wouldn't he answer those questions today in that uh, press briefing? So yep. we still don't know. He didn't yeah. answer them in the statement and he didn't take questions because his representations had to have known what were the obvious ones that were going to be asked. Correct. And he's getting he's getting legal representation, probably telling him not to talk, which I understand. But usually now that doesn't mean you're guilty of anything. But in this case, there, remember, I think for fo most folks, this is not just about Shohei Otani perhaps being suspended or fined from baseball. It's federal crime you're talking about here. Yeah. Not only the illegal bookmaking, but then also the transfer of this money and what he was doing uh, with that. And it was not something you could hide. So you look at that situation and you say, OK, I understand they're worried about his freedom, perhaps, and the fact that the fact that he could be under federal indictment if they were to find more. The question I have, too, and I think this is where the investigation has to unfold clearly, and I'm not even talking about the baseball investigation, mm -hmm. but the federal investigation is going to have to determine what happened here. and. If if Otani, you know, had done this and and you can understand it right to your point, him and Ipe close like brothers. So somebody comes to you, your family, even if they've done something illegal, you might help them. Right. You might feel that call to do that. And that was the first story. So then he says yes. And then he changes his story. Now, if it's untrue, if his if his new story is untrue, then his punishment, not only from the law, but then from baseball could be more severe, don't you think? I do, but you know what I learned? There's only one thing that, that I learned anyway from the press conference today. It's that he doesn't think it can be proven. Mm. Not necessarily that that he was telling the truth, but it, it was sort of a dare, you know? Okay, yeah. you think that I was aware of this? You think I sent that money myself? Prove it. Whether or not that can happen, whether or not the authorities or MLB or anyone else can prove that it was not just Mizuhara acting alone that remains to be seen. That's something in the details that we don't have access to. Right. But for him to go on live TV and read the statement saying, I found out about it just hours before all the rest of you did, and I didn't know it was missing, and I am a victim, and all this money was stolen from me, and I had no idea. For him to go out and say that, because he's obviously on record with it right now, his legal team has to believe that, well, first of all, it might be the truth, Mm -hmm. But if it's not, his legal team has to believe that no one's going to be able to prove otherwise. Well, and, and Mizuhara has said that he did that, right? He's basically admitted it after the fact, after the story changed to the in initial ESPN story, like you mentioned. So now they have somebody who's willing to take the fall, if you will. Uh, but that does not mean there's not evidence that would say that he's involved, correct? And, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see just how far Mizuhara is willing to take the fall. Because... Yeah. We don't know if he has legal representation yet. Obviously, he's going to need it. Sure. And obviously, he will get legal representation at some point. And it's possible that he hasn't had a lawyer sit him down yet and say, listen, if Otani didn't do this willingly, that means you're looking at way bigger charges even than you already are. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a legal expert. I, I can't tell you what the exact charges would be. But what that's saying is that he stole Otani's identity so that he could steal four and a half million dollars from him. 
and send illegal wire transfers to his illegal bookie. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, That's one on top of the other. Much bigger than just betting with an illegal bookie. So Correct. he's gonna he's already in hot water. If he, if Otani is is completely um, you know none the wiser in any of this, mm -hmm. then the 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 water they just turned up the heat considerably on Mizuhara. So let's see if Mizuhara sticks with his second story, that oh yeah it was all me, or if after he lawyers up, if he goes back to the original story, which was also Otani's original story, that uh, Otani worked with him to wire the money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's crazy because those, those things will play out and, and, and you never know when people cut deals, when they're facing criminal charges like that. So you don't know what's going to happen. We'll see how that unfolds. Let me ask you this question when it comes to major league baseball, clearly the worst possible position you could be in, you're about to start your new season, uh, your best player, perhaps the you know best player we've seen in generations is there in Los Angeles, signs a big contract. And now you're dealing with this. Uh, Rob Manfred, I know, is retiring in a few years. He probably wishes he would have retired two months ago. Uh, but when you look at how baseball handles this, Dan, how much is on the line for them here in how they deal with it, knowing that, of course, they don't want it to be true, but at the same time, they have to be, they have to look as though and show that they're doing due diligence. Well, MLB announced after the close of business on Friday, you know, a news dump, uh, oh, we're going to be <laughs> opening an investigation into Otani. Okay. Um, looking at precedent of how they've handled similar situations to this in the past, I think it's unlikely that he's going to be suspended by MLB, um, you know, unless the legal charges mount and there's something involved with that, which mm -hmm. again, I'm not an expert in that. Um, if he's found to have violated federal law and such and such, then who knows where things go from there. But just looking at MLB. Um, this is not a Pete Rose situation. He's not going to be banned for life. You know, Pete Rose right. is is kind of the, the the poster child for gambling and gambling suspensions for good reasons. Um, Pete Rose was a manager in a dugout betting on baseball games at that time. And so yeah. he was banned for life. Otani is several degrees removed from that. The, the rule in question is MLB Rule 21D3. Not to get too far in the weeds here, but that's the one that says... You know, you can't make illegal bets um, on sports and uh, or you can't make illegal bets, period. But, um, you know, the last player, last MLB player found to have been in violation of that was a Marlins pitcher named Jared Cozart in 2015. He himself made illegal bets on sports other than baseball. So it's not like he was paying someone else's debts on sports gambling. He made illegal bets himself and mm -hmm. he was not suspended. He was fined, but he was not suspended. So Otani is even a degree further removed from Cozart, at least the way I see it, because I, I don't think Otani was making these bets. I know that that's one of the conspiracy theories out there. Um, <laughs> and maybe it's true. We just really don't know a whole lot of anything, but assuming that Otani was not betting, then this is a degree further removed from what Cozart did, and Cozart was not suspended. So I don't think that MLB would have grounds to really suspend him, and they don't want to. It's Shohei Otani. Of course not. No one would be happy uh, to have him off the field, certainly not the, the people who run MLB. Yeah, and, and the other question I have for you before we let you go, and thank you so much for being so um, um, kind with your time tonight, is the fact that legalized ga gaming – uh, in the United States, especially in the last five years since the Supreme Court ruling, you've seen it roll out across states, still illegal in California. California does not have legal sports betting. Uh, but a lot of people who are opposed to it are using this as another example to say, ah, oh, see now. But we've seen in the UK where they've been doing it for decades and they have betting houses inside the soccer stadiums and all that kind of stuff. We've seen the NFL do it. We've had seen the NFL have players who have bet on football who were then summarily dis, uh, suspended. They've taken care of it in those legal states. How much does this put another light on gaming and professional sports in America? And will it do any damage? Because all of the leagues are now invested heavily in legal sports gaming. You know, um, it's interesting because just as I came down here and, and turned on my computer, I got a notification that a Toronto Raptors player uh, is in trouble for fishy prop bets on prop himself bet. that he yeah. was involved in. That's a much bigger deal from just reading the headline. Um, and I think that's 
the risk that all of these sports leagues are running by tempting fate with um, with with their their legal gambling partners. Now, with Otani and Mizuhara, this was illegal gambling. Mm-hmm. So theoretically, no matter what you know what legal gaming partners MLB has, that doesn't affect this because the bets were placed with an illegal bookie. That has been going on since uh, time immemorial <laughs> with sports. So that, um, I, I don't know if this is going to be the best example for people on either side to say, oh, uh, they should be involved with gambling. They shouldn't be involved with gambling. Mm-hmm. I think that this example is um, is 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 not going to be moving the needle that way one way or another. People will try to use it for both sides. Sure. Um, but it is going to be used as a, as a football in that ongoing debate, uh, kicked back and forth. So, you know, whether it should be or not, that's just the way it is because of the magnitude of this story. Well, and, and I think that this is actually in some ways, and now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I actually went to school in Nevada. I went to UNLV and so I was around a, a lot of folks who went into the gaming industry and have a lot of friends that work there. And the one thing I'll say, and you talked about the NBA issue that popped up early this week too, is that when it's legal gaming, and to your point with with the with the Otani situation, it's illegal bookmaking. That's just a legal bookmaking is still a forty four billion dollar industry in this country. Legal bookmaking is ninety two billion, so it's it's double the size, but it still shows you how illegal bookies are still a huge deal in the United States. But the legal side of it, because it is so regulated. This is how they find things like when they, they're concerned with point shaving or the situation with prop bets or the situation we saw in the NFL. The NFL has known if a player bets on something, they know, and guess what happens? They get suspended. They're able to track it a lot easier. So it's interesting how you can actually look at that and say, well, on the legal side, it's 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 more secure because there's so many parameters around it. But I think you're right. I think it's going to be the, those, those people on those sides in those states that have not passed it yet, like California, may use it as a political football. When you look at this situation i know it's early dan uh, but but w- if you had to make excuse the pun and, and, the, and the joke here the bet right now on what happens with Shohei otani what do you th- are you thinking that if he's clean let's say and this was all just he got ripped off uh it, to me it's nothing right but at the same time if it's not then at the very worst for major league baseball unless there's criminal charges uh i think it's just going to be an embarrassing situation for him or what do you think is going to happen i think Based on the press conference today, I think that he probably gets out of this with nothing worse than, um, you know, some some a, a lower public opinion of him. Mm. Because at the press conference today, the only thing that he said was, I had no idea of this. I'm the victim here. And I did not send this money myself. Does that make me believe that he did that? No, absolutely not. And in fact, the fact that he didn't take questions today makes me think the opposite more than anything. (laughs) But what that does say is that he doesn't think anyone's going to be able to prove that he was involved. And so that's an he didn't write that statement himself. Um, That statement was written by his lawyers, by his representatives. And they're the ones that obviously think that they can get out of this without anyone being able to prove that he was involved in this and sent the money himself. So um, right now his lawyers probably know more about this than anyone on the planet. Sure. And I am going to go with what I think they think uh, they can get away with. (laughs) Interesting way to put it. But you're right, though. Look, I mean, it it all comes down to when you're talking about criminal charges or even in, in the court of public opinion when it comes to this stuff with baseball, if you don't have any proof of it, it doesn't matter, especially if it was verbal conversations and who knows what happened. Uh, if you can't prove that, then it's not going to do anything. So it'll be interesting to see. By the way, fo- uh, make sure you follow Dan on x.com at D Epstein1983, and you can track this story. Dan, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate all your work on this, and we'll keep uh, tracking with you as it unfolds. Yeah, thank you very much for having me.